This is the second video in a series documenting the do-it-yourself construction of a ground-mounted 17.4 kilowatt electric solar array. The frame of this array is largely constructed of standard 2-inch galvanized pipe. Shown in this video are welded modifications that I made to some of the pipe in order to permanently seal the top end. These modifications are not suggested by the company that makes the frame connecting hardware and sealing the pipe in this manner may be unnecessary. Nevertheless, it brought me some comfort knowing there was an extra barrier against water intrusion. Rolling. Yeah. I'll just put some sunscreen on. And professional welders have the right gear. We're not professional. So what you have set up here is your long pole? Yeah, so this is a AC stick welder, so it, it really does better if I'm welding straight down, you know, in a vertical down position. Okay. So, I, you know, rather than have it sideways, um, I, I'll get a much better weld for this uh, if I can climb up on top of it and weld straight down. I um, see. So there's the disc and uh, I'll just put a tack there and on each quarter and then uh, then I'll drop the I'll drop the amperage down and, and get a long um, rod and do a full circle. Ready for some tacks? Fire away. Ready? Okay. Start here and we'll just go all the way around in a circle. A little lower current, I'm using 75 amps now. 75 amps? Yeah. Gotta get it started. How much of that long rod and did you consume? And you can see I used that whole rod up. There's nothing. Oh my gosh. Just that much left. <laughs> and you know, you're watching it go and you're like, okay, trying to make the race end as you come around. It's like, oh my God. <laughs> trying to make it. So, so what would have happened if you ran out of rod before you ran out of... You know, I'd have to stop and then you just chip back the slag and continue on okay. where you are. So it's um, not the end of the world if you run no, out of rod. No, no. And if you speed up, it's trouble. I mean, you you can't go but so fast. You got to keep your um, rod in the melt pool, and 
if you run out in front of it, you, you get a bad weld. So you have to resist the temptation to try to go faster. <laughs> so it's really important to not do that. All right, and then there's the slag on the top. Yeah. So we'll let that cool for a few seconds and then we chip that off. There you go. See it coming right off there? Yeah. Chip the slag off. And uh, everything's good except right there. I, I might have raced a little bit. <laughs> that, uh -huh. that, this bead here looks really nice and it's good. And then here I started to lose concentration a little bit and it's a little sloppy. So how can you tell the difference when you look well, at it? Well, this is a nice even bead. Yeah. Uh, the undercut is just right. I mean, there's really no undercut. It's mm -hmm. a, just a nice mesh of the bead into the original metal. Mm -hmm. It's a nice even bead. Got the kind of row of dimes look that you're always looking for. Mm -hmm. And then here it gets kind of lumpy and irregular. There's mm -hmm. a thin spot a thick spot and a thin spot and not a good um, not obvious incorporation between the bead and the base metal mm -hmm. so we'll we'll um, we'll do that one again I'll just take another rod and we'll blast over that I'll clean it up and, and shoot it a second time Ready? Ready. Here we go. So there's oh, yeah. the first weld right there, and then there's where we went over it with the, the second one just now. So I'll chip that away. So that weld there has a nice um, flow. This one here is a little bit cold right there, but it's over a spot that was okay, so I'm just going to grind that down. This is the area I was trying to fix. We're going to introduce a species, class species called a That is it. There you go. So I like this. I've got my little um, bug sprayer full of water. And I can, it's nice to have this around as a way to cool things down. Once you get a cold, it's a lot. You're a lot less likely to you know, burn, burn yourself. Burn yourself on it. <laughs> right when you reach over to pick it up, you take these gloves off and then make a big mistake. Then you're you're out of the shop for about two weeks while you're waiting for the burns to heal. <laughs> so that can set your schedule back. Uh, I hear you speaking from experience. All right, so this is prepping your threads to put a put a cap on the bottom. Yeah. Red seal on there. Paste in it. You 
you know, with the 30% tax credit, that that might get me into, you know, striking distance of where it makes sense to do it. Mm -hmm. Without it, you know, I don't know, questionable. Mm -hmm. But at this point, I'm just operating on faith that it's a good idea. <laughs> So this is uh, kind of a side profile showing the, the plan. So these are the short pipes. Uh, that's three feet tall coming out of the ground. And this is the longer one, which is uh, five and a quarter feet tall. Mm -hmm. uh, the end caps on the top aren't drawn in, but the pipe end on. And then uh, this is the iron ridge extruded um, rail beam, mm -hmm. and then the four panels on top of that that are bolted in. And is this cross piece here to stabilize? Yeah, I don't think that's going to be necessary. I drew it in, but um, because this is so short, this is going to be able to hand, handle any sideways load pretty well. So okay. I'll build it and then shove it <laughs> and see how much it Mm -hmm. it, it deviates, and uh, I may or may not throw in uh, that cross beam, yeah. depending on how strong it is. But this only being three feet out of the ground, that's not a lot of lever arm, uh -huh. and uh, that'll be able to hold it pretty stiff. Okay. We'll see how it goes. Yeah.